Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a one versus one on Sturzdorf. Yes, need Sturzdorf shall be where the fighting shall be taking place. We shall be watching Lulis. Lulis fighting for the Americans, fighting for the first infantry division in a fight against Imperial Dane, that cheeky sword, fighting for the Panzerlehr Panzer Division. Most likely, anyways. The Amok Quarters is going up. That's the first sort of thing to start out with. Points are being taken. Troops are heading up left and right. Rather standard thing for me, you know, the two pioneers. The Amok Quarters, folks, and this. Two engineers, and also note that while I'm spreading out, Lulis is taking a more center words sort of approach, perhaps a bit more right, but he's not spreading out quite fully. He's in fact ignoring the low few point right next to his base, in fact, going straight for the munitions. Low there and medium there, so clearly he's got something planned involving munitions. First squad of Fulskandira around me from the Wehrmacht quarters. Armed to the teeth with K 98 ks and a single Sturmgewehr in single shot mode. Basically does a bit more damage than a car 9 jk and that's about it. Points being secured, munitions there, secured first squad of riflemen out for Lulis. Pioneers hitting up right, pioneers hitting up left, focusing a bit more right here initially. And some first engineers advancing and there we go, coming immediately under fire from the false grenadiers. Riflemen squad though aren't closing in. Engineers on heavy cover, false guys will need to pull away and there we go. The Reifelmen arrive, Heinz, Fritz and Helmut, Jarl and Bent move up behind the truck and apparently there's a large cat desiring attention from me. There we go. False grenades, there we go, one pioneer is down, looks like they might be able to cure the Victory point, the Falskers keep on fighting so far, holding out quite nicely behind the heavy cover, what turned out to be a track. And at the same time, the first Schwimmwagen arrived to provide some fire support for the Falskers. And there we go, unleashing an MG barrage. Going to move up, going to flank up, perhaps even push them out of cover. And there we go, allowing the Falskers to push up forwards to the next piece of heavy cover. So it's slightly more better position, so there's a considerably less great position for the Americans to attack this on. But we are seeing them heading up the centre. A bit up the right. Victory point there. Secured centre once secured by the Americans. Panzerlea continues forwards. Another squad of Fulks Grenadiers up. And initially the MP40 was basic MP44 storm gear was handed out to squad leaders to basically overall that way increase the squad firepower, just like a Gewehr 43 tended to be handed out to the second in command of a squad, although later on with the MP44 they began equipping it in a larger scale. Right here coming under five false guys pulling back, one rifleman down, another squad moving up, taking up position in the house here. All right for finding here, there's three windows overall, this is a building that works nicely for infantry, although less so there on the left hand side. Rifleman pulling back, Lulis being a bit cautious at the same time though making nice progress on the right hand side. Lots of engineers moving in there. Fultz guys in the Schwimmbahn continues to fight. MG42 on the way. There's MG42 and a bit of mining going on there. Aggressive mining early on can help. Oh, Riven trying to flank. Fultz guys desperately rushing into the building. Going to catch Riven outside. And there we go. A few hits there. Schwimmbahn can also provide a bit of fire support. Lulis here makes a mistake though. He moves into the front of the broadside of the building. Considerably a bad movement already there. His riflemen take a punishing beating. And they continue to try to get the shrimp mag. They really want it. I mean, it's low on health, but at the same time, so are they. And the shrimp mag is equipped with a machine gun. There we go. Tricking through, I know, this small forested area. Escaping. A bit haphazardly. The riflemen, there we go. The other score is forced away. Riven holding up there, MG42 advancing slowly. Fulskans inside the house though are suffering considerable losses down to two men. As Larger continued on Riven is holding up the center. Third squad of Fulskans on the way for the Panzerlehr. MG42 takes up position in the administrative building and begins to fire down onto the Yankees. And there we go, Riven down. 
Center so far stabilized in the name of the fatherland. Schwimmagen in need of repairs. Pioneers moving up there, getting a flame for the Flammenwerfer. Looks like Lulis might get some more rifle or some upgrades for his rifle, depending on how he feels about it. But having a good grip on the right hand side so far, although largely not a lot of fighting has been happening there. There go the flame for Aponius, engaging the engineers, burning them and toasting them. There they go, already one burst into flames. And there we go, another rifle squad out there, and Trius end up to sort of help because they have taken a beating, and the Trius end, of course, will keep them running in the well, longer run. Yes, sir. These chaps could definitely do with a bit of retreat, and note here, wiring down to sort of protect the flank, make it a bit harder to rush at this building. That is one of the primary uses of barbed wire, not necessarily to block a path, but to basically make it harder to move, and more specifically, move directly at whatever they want to move at. Say, for example, they want to get close to the grenade. This sort of distance also ensures they actually can't quite easily get up with a grenade. Rather here, and ooh, very close to mine. Oh, Schwimmagen goes down. It's poor, flimsy frame offered and no defense against the mine. And the crew was lost in a burst of fire. Skirmish face reached. MP4 is being equipped to these fortunate few, while a few others hiding here behind some sort of console. Of course, Christian becomes what will Lulis do next? BARs, grenades, sticky bombs. Fons going to slowly push back. Rifle advancing, holding up right here behind. Something, I'm not entirely sure what it used to be. They're probably related to the function of. Ah, yes. Something to do with stretching the rails. But there go the MP40 Fultz Gun ES move up the left hand side, forcing away the rifleman quite nicely. Engineers could always be pushed away. Note the mine went off there. Another squad of Fultz moving in. And the flamethrowers do what they can, but the Fultz do manage to get close in, forcing away the engineers with the threat of MP40 bullets down their gullets. <coughs> Pioneers holding up there. And there we go, Browning Automatics forcing the Pioneers to evacuate the premises since they absolutely have nothing to match that level of firepower. Flame for engineers moving up to flank, Pioneers retreating. One engineer bites the dust, taking a bullet in the stomach. At the same time, Kriegbags going up, although of course at this time it could cancel and just take up. On this case, I stick to the current plan. Well, in this case, of course, we can just get some... No, I actually get a half-track out, although I might have gotten some grenadiers out otherwise. And might be getting a medic bunker right now, so do note that 150 manpower was deducted from the manpower pool. To sort of help in the fighting in the longer run. Note, close to where I sort of expect most of the fighting to happen, but at the same time, not too bloody close either. And certainly not too exposed. Fultz Grenadiers are reinforcing. And there we go. All up and running. Rifle here coming under fire from the Fultz Grenadiers. Heavy cut, we are seeing another squad with some flame first coming in to flank the Fultz Grenadiers, leaving this a much undesired position. Mines going down there. Nice job by Lulis. While they rifle go up for the heavy munitions. Really getting a nice wide front hitch against me. And quickly loading up some troops into the Mittlerer Schützenpanzerwagen. Rolling out. Pani is going to get reinforced. Grenadiers on the way. And there we go. These, this squad of riflemen is quickly retreating, pulling away, although having secured the fuel point. Half track advances, of course, this might also indicate for him he needs to get sticky bombs. And there you go, Rifleman coming under attack. Fultz is quickly popping out to ambush with fire. And there you go, Rifleman taking quite a shooting. Hank goes down. Quickly securing the fuel point while quickly popping into the half track again to move on to the next point of contention. The next problematic point or point of conflict, crisis, whatever. MG moving out. 
half track rushing ahead and let's go look at Lulis and the 1st Infantry Division actually floating quite a bit of manpower at the moment although he might have plans since he's going for supply out Flame for Engineers here coming under assault the half tag moving in quickly suppressing and the full is going to move in for the kill of course using the closeness afforded to them by the half tag delivering them right there Engineers pinned and pushed off Grenadiers moving up from the south false Grenadiers pulling away as well from he in fact completely retreating and there we go, another weapon squad. Full is charging it, and there we go. Pushed away. Nice combined arms tactics. Grenadiers and half tech continue on, though. The medic bunker is under fire, more specifically, the medics are targets. And there we go, sticky bomb. Delivered onto the half track. Grenadiers, though, delivering a grenade of their own, some uh, munitions, and there we go. Riflemen do get suppressed potentially depressed as well as their comrades are dying amongst the lumber and there we go pushed away successfully Forward supply lines are broken. medics continue to pull in the wounded fuel being secured advancing in towards the center Rather than up hitting the flank, troops there quickly stopped by the MG42. And a grenade which a a was a bit point. too slow. But Lulis does have a motor pull up and we are seeing an anti-tank on first out. He's probably going to do that to try and get the half track. Fonsk has caught a bit on the open rather than moving up. Using a bit of piping for nice cover, at least making it a bit harder to hit. Which is generally what light cover does, it provides no real protection against bullets, whereas heavy cover does. A bit in there, we've got half track moving up. Also allows the full space to reinforce. And a few grenades here getting caught in a very bad position, in fact. Out in the open versus Rampin Veterans 1 and the Flame for Engineers. Left flank in trouble, half track quickly forced to shift. And the full is here forced to retreat. And meanwhile, the pioneers continue to work over under there. Storm army though has been reached. False guns reinforcing. Half track advancing, quickly suppressing quite a few engineers. And the rifle MG42 now adds in with even more greater volumes of MG42 bullets. Damage engine on the half track. False guns following up on the suppressed rifleman. Quickly finishing off a few more while the engineers up north are quick to press. Note a mine attempt right there by Lulis. Not even next succeeded for all I know. Right from there pushing up the right hand side. Really aggressive play by Lulis. He's not just hitting one spot. He's constantly sort of pressuring me, forcing me to shift constantly all the again. In that sense the half track is helping as it sort of allows me to quickly react to threats left and right. Mine goes off right there. Killing and pinning a squad. Storm Army is up. Units are on the way from that. And a quick reaction force is dispatched of Volkskanners and Grenadiers. A mix of rifles and MP40s. Mine down there. Nice spot for mining, obviously. Three squads of riflemen. No doctrine as of yet for Lulis. And the rifle right there might be a bit exposed. Mine goes off, killing three Grenadiers. Oh, Grenadier squad down. Heavy casualties, another one squat out though, probably reformed from the medic bunker. Quite the fortunate set of circumstances right there. Fulsko is moving up and trying to attack this anti-tank gun, but taking punishing casualties in the process. Just really nasty right there. So many men lost. Medics moving in. Mines being laid down again, kind of this, this time within range to try and perhaps stop the engineers. We know the mines do finish. anti tank advancing here, half track, keeping that bit up there, and there we go. Sturm gets shoots out first. Flame for a pony is advancing up, false guns here getting burnt, toasted. Need a medic bunker, I would, I mean, not a medic bunker, but a Kampfkraft center. Really something I have a nice attentive getting. MG Grenadiers up though, gunning down the rifle as they do advance. And there we go, already a few gun down the Grenadiers holding out, but they might not for much longer, although. They do take quite a toll on the rifle, in fact, four gunners with an MG pretty much gunned down, six riflemen as they assault. 
although only one makes it out of there alive. Hans running away with tears streaming down his eyes as his comrades were gunned down by a vicious pack of riflemen. Stuk! Poor handling right there, went ahead too far without support and gets sticky bombed, although the engine MG on the other hand managed to suppress the bastards who did it. Right, and they'll continue up here, brutalizing medics for the vengeance of their lost comrades. So, six riflemen for one squad. Not bad. But a Kampfkraft center is needed to deliver some VET-20 onto the German Grenadiers. The Volkswagen is quickly ordered to counter-attack. The MP40 is leading the way. Mines groups up just in case Lulis has more mines, which he obviously has. No upgrades from him and no doctrine as of yet. That I do find a bit disturbing. Although we do see an armored car ready, although already taking a bit of damage, probably from the Sturmgeschutz. shoots. And right from hold up here behind the cover, the pioneers firing and we're seeing airborne doctrine and air tank on dropping in from above. Engineers coming under heavy fire, their cover blown away by the storm canone of the Stug, which is what it's called, in fact, a storm canone. And we are, oh, the engineers, veterans here too, but they make it out of there. Quite miracle grenadiers pull up to support with their MG42. And again, the MG42 in this configuration was probably most handed out. Biport mount with a small drum magazine. And Panzer grenadiers usually had a higher quantity allocated to them. Right, no continue. The MG grenadiers holding up here by the flank. A bit harder to hit, in fact, they're in a sort of, I believe it's in position. I'm not entirely sure, but armor car pulls up. Stuk still damaged the engine. Half-track pulling away. Though eight kills, by the way, on the half-track. That's actually quite nice. Probably should consider some metrancy for that one as well. Grenadiers, though, continue to find away. Though so far not achieving so much kills. And the MG gun, in this case, can't actually fire. He seems to position himself a bit badly. Grenadiers down to two men, although one more kill. Anti-tank, and by the way, was recruited and, well, stolen from the Yankees. Now a Panzerabwehrkanone in the Deutsches Waffen. Panzerwaffen, in other ways. Grenadiers need to retreat, though. Low health, low health, low health. Foot go down. And they were lost. Poor handling right there. I should have retrieved them faster. Main gun destroyed on the armored car. Pressure on all sides, but stormtroopers are out. Lead troops from the Panzerlehr with Sturmgewehrs. And some engineers on the run there. German mines and this armored car quickly pulling up for some swift repairs. Greyhound though not doing too much. Troops reinforcing. Stormtroopers holding up the center with the armored car. Greyhound moving in. Stu could be used to pull in. Still no Kampfkraft center. Again, rather one of my main weaknesses and something I definitely do need to work on. No arguments there the discussion there as again quickly shifting to pull up here where, he's pro where he probably figures I'm weaker which is not off troops here though coming a bit under fire Greyhound pulling in hoping to catch the armored car likely to happen at this stage have I not I need to get that anti-tank and fully reinforced while I have the half track there Volker's moving up, and the Stormtroopers moving in for the assault as well. Moving up close to the Rivermen. Getting suppressed though, nice suppressive volley from Lulis. Quickly suppressed the Stormtroopers, we're asking the bundle grenade going up. Oh, World War One tactic of basically just strapping a lot of grenade warheads together to create an even larger grenade. And there we go, the anti-tank and was also decrewed, the airborne crewing it had no chance. Majority of the map control though is currently in the hands of the Yankees. There you go, Raffin quickly coming under fire. Mine troops moving up, armor car getting repaired. Mine goes off, pinning and killing a few riflemen. Anti tank gun recruit. Fault goes moving up here. Oh dear. Looking awfully close there. And rather looks like I've lost several Volkswagen squads already, in fact, lost, looks like I've lost two of them. So in fact, I'm down to two infantry squads, considerable heavy casualties due to the, well, high proportion of mines and whatnot. 
Definitely not looking too good for the Panzerlea at the moment. Greyhound patrolling about. Stormtroopers sneaking out of there. Down to three men with low health. There we go. The anti-tank gets a nice hit on the Greyhound. But the Greyhound does escape safely. And returning a bit to the Wehrmacht. Blitzkrieg, of course. Stormtroopers and the Stu 42 could be called in. Nebelwerfer, though, called in. And some additional grenadiers to provide some more infantry since I'm well down to two infantry squads. I need more. And pulling back to the half track, functioning quite nicely as a forward command post, allowing me to reinforce and regroup without a full retreat. That's also saving me time. And there you go, first needle of a barrage. I'm launching it here largely because, well, this is a barrage weapon and I might be able to mess up an assault. If it was to happen, but clearly it wasn't. So. Now I just sort of gave him the sort of cue that, oh wait, I've got a Nebelwerfer. Look out, Yankees! Reporting. Airborne, though, have been dropped in for Lulis, providing him with some assault infantry with their carbines, which is a bit of an odd weapon they were equipped with, although also recall his rifles. They do have something similar to elite armor, but there's some slight differences. Slight, though. And their carbines sort of will function up nicely up close. Plus, of course, Airborne are in fact the toughest Allied infantry unit in the game. Well, the American infantry unit, anyways. Got quite a bit of health, in fact. Pioneer, though, down. Recall his rifles. Blasted Heinz apart. Grenier's moving up. Getting a few shots on the riflemen. Kampfkraft Center finally goes up. I mean, 21st minutes, 21 minutes into the game is not necessarily very good. Granati goes off at the Rifleman. And there we go, four man down. One even flies over the parapet into the road. Face down first. Greyhound pushing in there, going for the MD position, pushing up on the left hand side as well. Armor car doing what he can, going to get sticky bombed by the veterans who two riflemen. And clearly, I mean, Lulis is going for the heavy infantry assault force with a few anti tank guns. Perhaps a Greyhound sort of keep me a bit on my toes, but clearly, this is an infantry assault. Airborne from the 82nd, providing a bit of elite infantry support. Yes, comrade. More need of rockets to keep the Allies down, killing two men so far. The incendiary payload burning away a few of the Americans, probably going to be, well, white phosphorus from what I know. It was apparently one of the major things that were used in incendiary weapons back then. Napalm, I believe, was later, but that was American. Not entirely sure what the Germans used for their incendiary loads, but infantry veterans are one up. And some armor veterans are up, but another unit has been lost. Not sure what, though. But finally, veterans are one providing a bit of healing, although that should have been up much earlier on, I think. Stormtroops moving in there and getting quite a few kills there, gunning down Americans indiscriminately. The enemy is seizing our territory. While the Falklands continue to fight against the Airborne, who are reinforced on the spot. Clearly not the fact that's going to work their way. And there we go, armor veterans who want up. And a mine is hit on the retreat. Stormtroopers getting a bit taxed. Get out, get out, bundle grenade. And full rifleman blasted to bits, leaving a small crater as a memory. And looks, oh dear, the MG was lost, the building collapsed. So that was what I lost. Another one though is out. Could also consider some support veterancy. Armor car doing all right here against the airborne, ambushing them with its auto cannon. Could upgrade it to a Puma, although in this case I'd rather have used the munitions elsewhere. And of course, one funny thing to note is there are actually more upgrades to this type of armored car than just the sort of we know as the Puma, in fact. Strafing run, clearing out the anti-tank and pinning down a few, but actually overall this strafing run didn't do too much. Then it is finding here, Veteran D2 would be nice, though that's clearly not happening. Stu getting repaired, then it is pushing up. Two squads out in fact now. Getting a four squad force now. Armor car pulling away, getting handed down by the airborne though. False they're moving into support. And the MG bunker as well, and the airborne are just getting gutted. That was quick. Anti-tank on the crude. Rifle on the retreat. 
Although so are the Grenadiers as well. And the anti-tank and is swiftly and desperately recruit by some pioneers. Not the preferred way of doing it, but rather I didn't have much else and I wanted that anti-tank gun ready to take on the Greyhound just in case. All three victory points that are in the hands of the Americans, though they are a bit ticked down. Panzalea, though, fighting on nonetheless. Paris suicided. Couldn't retreat. To which I come with the slightly more glib. C'est la vie. I know. But usually there's not much to do about it. Although I do find sometimes the trick is you're actually pressing the wrong hotkey. In my case, I usually end up pressing Y and then going, why aren't they retreating? Oh, why? But also minor things like small command lag can be happening as well. There's some oddities there. Stormtroopers hold up there. Rifle moving up. Coming under fire. Greyhound also moving up. Anti-tank gun. Veteran T2 flame from years. 18 kills by the way. Nicely done. Stormtroopers don't need to be careful. Veteran T2 on the way. And another unit down. Looks like the Pioneers. Oh, Storm. Oh, with the Stormtroopers lost as well. Heavy losses for the Panzer continue to rake up. The only thing really keeping the fight going is the Medic Bunker. And the armor car needs to be repaired. But the sort of things that actually were sort of made as upgrades for this were actually something like the same gun as you sort of saw on the Panzer IV Infantry Support tank. Basically the low velocity gun of it was actually mounted on this as a sort of support weapon to fight the armor cast with some heavier firepower that way. And later on, in fact, there were actually pack 40 versions made of it. Though they actually didn't function in a turret, more like an assault gun, but still a bit of fun fact about the heavy armored car. It actually had a few of its own upgrades you probably didn't know about there. Rifle advancing up there, nice force gun is holding up. Oh. Traps make a bit of a hiccup there. MD holding up. Fox is here getting blasted. Ram here getting suppressed. And he's still not retreating. He's quite intent on getting it. A few MGs could be beneficially upgraded. So it's going to be Grenadiers quite nicely there. Only one kill for those poor Grenadiers. More need worth a fire. The half track still at the front, having retired from combat duties. Now mainly just providing reinforcements. And a nice need for rocket hitting right there, sending off a few mines. Greyhound though continuing to patrol the outer sides. High from maneuvering. Yeah. Armor car in need of repairs again. And MD on the way, and. Oh, Greyhound mind. Cheeky that. It's only nice. Need to break out though. In my case, not sure it is with Fraps and messing up halfway through the match lately. There we go, another MG42 up. I'm not entirely sure it is if it is worth the 75 munitions, but still. Come on, stabilize Fraps. Come on, Fraps, please. Not sure what's going on. And there we go. I thought. My apologies for the technical difficulties, of course. Never funny when it happens for neither of us. But Tiger soon ready to be called in from the Panzerlehrs Funkline Abteilung, which was basically a radio control unit, which did have a few Tigers and a King Tiger. Greyhound. Mine avoided. Oh, and it hits it on the what, pulling back. Oh, tragic. Grenier's moving up, toting the MG42. Kreedling's a very precious weapon. Grenier's holding up the flank here. They could consider getting another MG42. Grenier's advancing. Assault commences. Stuke not quite supporting. And the Grenier's instead end up being sent in on their own. Didn't quite work out very well now, did it, Dane? Nope. And another assault going up there on the flank. Flame for engine is moving in, veterans who want. 
Not quite having any luck though. Continuing up there on the right flank as well. And the American onslaught goes in. Tiger arrives on the field. MG sorted out anti tank gun next. And Yunus going in for the bunker, but. Lulis slightly retreating. He could have done with the medic station, I think, though, with all the infantry he has on the field. Another airborne squad popped in. He's actually floating quite a bit of resources. For no apparent reason, even. Tiger leading the way. Not having much luck with this for some reason. And yeah, not quite staple yet. Greyhound though knocked out by the Tiger. Come on. Damn you. And yes. Airborne moving in, recall his rivals on the way. Oh, one gets blasted to bits, the Grenadiers advancing. Okay, be careful though again when advancing with the LMG Grenadiers. They can only fire when standing still. Or oh, the LMG anyways, can can. Airborne hold up there, arriving up there, getting blasted by the high explosive shells from the Tiger tank. Tank depot in fact, going up for Lulis. Stu could be advancing up here and there definitely could be some advances up towards there. Anti-tank and they're finding itself under fire from the Grenadiers of the Panzerlehrs, elite panzer division, fighting, well, pretty much only on the western front, I think, as well. Although there might have been a slight trip to the eastern front much later on in the war. But for an elite panzer division, it pretty much largely only saw action on the western front. Fort Normandy was pulled back for quite a bit and then fought in the Ardennes. But Gunders continue advancing up, medics continue pulling in the wounded, anti-tank and maneuvering, Tiger getting repaired, Flutkus moving up here, oh they might be encountering some nasty nasty riflemen, and the tank depot getting some tanks on the way! Huzzah! While the 82nd Airborne men move up to support the riflemen and the push in the centre. And we are seeing a Blitzkrieg assault going in, stunning a bit, Gunders moving up to provide support, MG firing from behind the remnants of the building, and the anti-tank gun gets the crew. We are seeing a strafing run moving in. Oh, I'm not moving in. Well, arriving and... Oh, we got the MG. That's... Well, that's rare, actually. I don't usually think you can get in a machine gun like that. But apparently he pulled it off. And there's the moving up. Tiger a bit in distress. False is moving back. Probably to reinforce at the half-track. Another gun is caught reformed. The gun is advanced further up. Gun is doing what they can to stop the... Rifleman from pulling up through the centre. Pretty much four men holding up a much larger force. The Grenadier supporting. Tiger under heavy fire. Rifleman squad went down. Other airborne moving up. Getting shot down. The Tiger opening up with another nice volley. Heavily damaged. And the Grenadiers quickly moving up. Manning the MG again. While the uh, MG Grenadiers move up and might be getting off some Blitzkrieg assault right on the veteran. Two Rifleman. Another unit down. Just so much carnage going on. The MG firing up close. Tiger adding in. Grenades getting lobbed. Stunning and wounding. And there we go. We do see the rifle retreating. Making it largely out there alive. What the fuck? Retreat commands. Again, always be sure you're actually pressing the right button. Again, I do find that when I check, I'm actually not pressing the retreat. So, again, always be sure you are pressing the retreat. And finally, the problems are over. Again, I do sincerely apologize for the technical difficulties. Grenadiers, though, managed to pull out of that one. Several squads have been reformed by now, which is always nice. And again, half track nicely functioning as a point to pull back on, ensuring I don't have to full retreat to my base, thus saying the time and ensuring I can quickly pull up some defences. Here I could consider setting up some barbed wires and sandbags to sort of fortify against Allied counter-attack. Veterans run up for support units by the way. Pushing up through the left hand side. 
Grenadiers there have not been reinforced yet. And the Sherman advances right onto Fultz Grenadiers. Blasting them, but not quite actually hitting at the moment. And Needler was launched in to store up the American left side assault and looks like it turns it into, well, pretty much a full round except for one squad. Stu curled up there as well. Airborne though nearby. Veteran D2 for the assault guns could be considered. M might be on the way. Plus, of course, with the Tiger. Airborne though moving in. Charging ahead. Braving the Veteran D1 MD5, which is actually considered more accurate. And just note how quickly they're just cut down. We do see a grenade right on the MG and one man does go down but the airborne themselves while charging straight into a veteran C1 MG were absolutely gutted. Stug advances, veteran C2 now, MG gunner on top, health bonus. I do believe the Tiger also actually gained some toughness bonuses as well. Half tag moves up to reinforce the MG gunners. Tiger moves about, blasting away. Uh, the Rifleman getting two more, hiding behind what remain, I believe were some reactors or turbines. Well, not reactors, but generators. And he's quickly pulling up to support the Sturmgeschutz with additional MD fire. And the Rifleman are just charging right into it. Coming under intense machine gun fires, three of them are firing, one heavy in fact. Grenade goes off but does not fall enough, anti-tanga though moves up. Nickel with rockets unleashed, nine kills on that one. And instead, hit my own troops. Oh, that talk about rubbish luck there. And the Grenadiers come under fire from the Sherman. Anti-Tanker moves up. Stug terribly exposed. Out of control. Crashes into the remains of the buildings. False guys moving in. Lulis continues the advance up the center. No medic station for Lulis, which could have benefited him, I think. Plus, of course, some better resource expenditure. Both supply and upgrades, that's good. Tiger though moves in, gets off a nice hit on the Sherman tank. Well, the Sherman then quickly, of course, retreats in the face of greater armor. While a few Grenadiers cover the left flank, the rest advance up in support of the Tiger. Nice hit on the anti tank and almost destroying it. And some Pioneer sneaking up with the Minesweeper. Looks like another anti tank gun dropped in to support Lulis and the 1st Infantry. 82nd doing what he can. And the Tiger coming suddenly under very intense fires. Two anti tank guns bear down on it. Recall his rivals to the Sherms, plus, of course, the threat of sticky bombs. The Tiger realizes it is not invincible. And some Ruffin going straight for the victory point, though, run into a considerable amount of trouble as grenades are unleashed on them, stunning them and wounding them. Strafing run, though, somewhere. Going in again, the MG42, and again he kills it. I'm a bit unsure how that happens. Oh well. Our forces are taking and there we go. Rivalman squad down. Losing a victory point. We are losing a victory point. Going for the victory point over there. Another banker going up. Going to be a repair banker to help keep the tiger functional. Another Stug out. German infantry advances. And the Nebelwerfer's howl can be heard once more. Small rockets are launched. First infantry though in a bit of trouble have taken some nasty losses. Has not been able to really form, pull off a really good assault partly because he's largely now gone from being rather aggressive to only really attacking around these two points. He stopped, you know, for example, trying to flank through here which could otherwise have worked quite nicely considering there are some more exposed support weapons around here. Another anti-tank and recruit. In fact, all anti-tank and so far in this match have been American. Not a single German pack has been fielded. And there hasn't really been a need for it. Airborne moving in, running straight into the gun. He's probably going to try and clear out the anti-tank gun. Ensure that if the Americans can't use it, the Krauts can't either. And there we go, grenade. Killing one crew member, which surprisingly enough, the others survive. Although probably with the bits of Helmut stuck in there. Tozos. Sherman heavily exposed to anti-tank gun fire. Grenadiers could push up a bit. 
And the right from veterans, he free right from the route against the Fox Grenadiers. And again, you should always be careful about advancing into heavy automatic fire, particularly when there's also an MG supporting the Fox Grenadiers with MP40s. Regaining the right. Lulis pushes onwards, but again, he is slowly bleeding out. And again, he's slowly lacking in the more imaginative, aggressive parts and basically just resorting to, well, frontal assaults. While well, I'm basically just trying to hold it on to the territory and make slow but certain advances. And another MG42. And he's advancing there, supporting the other squad with the MG. Quick reload there. Sharon moves in and misses. Oh dear. And there we go. Freitman flanking in. Fox Guns though holding up the rear. And of course, Ravn Active, they want to get close to the Gunners, actually have to expose themselves to the MP40s. And Titan Gun firing at the wrong chaps. Flame first moving in, forcing away the crowds out of the pits. And we do get veterans to. Oh, veterans hit free rifle and they get the MP40 Fox Gunners. Gunners rush away. Oh dear, he's got two veterans hit free rifle squads. Quite. Nasty and the Stuka advancing instead find itself exposed to heavy anti-tank and fire a rather poor move by me by me. The gun is they continue to fire away with their MG. Continue to rake up the kills. More grenadiers still reformed. And as they turn to me. Four squads of grenadiers. The medic bunker has definitely paid off in this case, although again sometimes it doesn't. And let's see if you have a grenade! Heavy losses, and they finish off the rifleman. Bit of a bold move there by Lulis. Clearly did not work out. And instead he lost the veterans free squad. Airborne moving out again. And now we see a sniper out for Lulis instead of perhaps getting some more armor or perhaps some tank destroyers. Quite a bit of munitions. Hold up. And the anti-tank and actually gets an infantry kill. 57mm si round, flying through some poor airborne bastard. Killed by a tungsten core round. Grenade against the Grenadiers. Tiger and anti-tank and continue to unleash hell. And the sniper continues raking up the kills. Oh my again, a bit curious he decided to go for that all of a sudden. And particularly this laid on. Might have benefited more from a supply drop with some mortars and heavy machine guns to sort of push forward and protect himself against German counterattacks. Sherman the advantage, sniper pushed away, Nibler for rockets falling down. Sherman actually moves straight into the line of fire, the anti tank and the tiger. Oh, both miss! The enemy has 50 points left. But the tiger pushes forward, supported by the grenadiers. Although oh, more could be used. And a Stormtrooper squad arrives on the field, a second one. And the anti-tank gun gets sorted out. The Tiger oh, almost having the Sherman done for. And the airborne for that matter also looks to be pretty close to the end. And there we go, down they go. Rifleman down. Grenadiers closer going down. And Sherman definitely way above his head. GG, zombies and retreat bug won this one. No. We're not playing Warcraft and no zombies. Partly because it's just silly, and partly because it also shows that, well, if you're sort of terming it as zombies, you're also terming it as something that's unfair or something else. And again, something I'd like to try and bring up once in a while is 
mentality matters how you approach and view things also matters on how you actually win the game and as soon as you go well they're zombies they're the undead then you're also sort of going well they're unfair and clearly if I won it was not because I was playing poorly myself and again as soon as you do that you begin playing poorly because again you're not improving you're not saying I like, oh I could have done this better I perhaps you know I the mighty Lulis should not have restricted my later assaults only being on a very small frontage and constantly attacking in the expected positions instead of perhaps trying some sort of wider flank since I actually had the opportunity with a lot of territory secured to attack from numerous points making it much harder for my opponent to concentrate my forces and no it was zombies so again you know mentality matters and again you know attacking from other points also matters the only thing that rather helped me largely in fact was his own behavior in attacking down the same two routes it certainly also made the need of a considerably more effective it made my grenadiers more effective role it made everything more effective I mean he also himself you know had some rather lucky things like clearing out MGs with single strafing runs but let's you know go into details on that part I should have gone for veterans faster though again really bad habit I have the medic bunker though clearly paid itself off and again medic bunkers medic stations if well placed can definitely help you out in a fight and again I do recommend them but the MGs also did quite all right. I mean, some cases less so, other cases. I mean, again, the first engagement really there, you know, six riflemen down. That's quite all right. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Again, apologize for the technical difficulties. If you enjoyed it, why not subscribe to your friends or someone else? If you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own or provide some feedback in the comments? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.